Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Complete Sports Media Podcast. I'm your host, Darren Campbell. We've got a great uh, breakdown today. We're going to be joined by Dale Corey. We're going to talk some hockey, some baseball, some golf, and uh, some junior hockey. It's going to be a lot of fun, so can't, can't wait. I'm glad you're joining us. Uh, let's get into it right now. Hi, Dale. How are you? Darren, I am awesome. Uh, it's, it's been beautiful sunshine, uh, lots of heat here in the Okanagan, but we're actually getting a little bit of rain today, so it's a nice break. So good day to stay inside and watch hockey, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. this is uh, strange with uh, hockey, you know, so far into the summer. It's hard for a lot of people that want to be out there enjoying the nice weather. Uh, you know, we, we have a short window here in, in Canada of be- beautiful weather, so uh, yeah, it's been tough for some people. I've been uh, watching myself because, uh, you know, I've got this podcast going on, but a lot of people I talk to are just catching bits and pieces of the game. So, I, I, But I understand you've been watching quite a bit of the Canucks. Yeah, I've been watching the Canuck games. Uh, I'm a Canucks fan. I'm, I'm glad to see that they're back going now. Try to catch a little bit of some of the other games as well, bits and pieces here, especially with those uh, early starts and games. Uh, continuing throughout the day on a lot of days um, but uh, another win today they just uh, wrapped things up a little while ago with a three nothing victory over over Minnesota to take a, a 2-1 lead in the series and uh, hey it was it was probably one of the most impressive wins we've seen by the Canucks not just in a long long time because they haven't played for a number of months but throughout the season I mean they they played very well today from uh uh, from goaltender uh, Markstrom all the way out and, and getting uh, Quinn Hughes in the offense and uh, Brock Besser in the offense. So an impressive victory, and uh, they're looking good right now. Yeah, they sure are. Yeah, yeah. after that uh, initial game, 3 nothing loss, I think the, a lot of people jumped off the bandwagon and started worrying and started thinking, yeah. uh-oh, uh, all this weight, and now you know they're going to get knocked off really quick. But they had a pretty solid game, uh, game two, a big 4-3 win. They were uh, de- definitely the better team. Uh, you know, Minnesota, uh, yeah, Minnesota scored some late goals to make it 4-3, but uh, Canucks looked pretty good. But today, you're right, uh, really solid. Another 3 nothing victory. Um, great shutout by Markstrom. And Quint, you mentioned Quinn Hughes, uh, three assists. Uh, you know, this this kid is just so fun to watch, just so patient, just all the goals today, he, he, he just looked so ph- phenomenal. And uh, it's, he's such a treat. Yeah, he is. He's, he's just so confident with the puck. And for a young player in his first year, um, you know, that's a rarity to, to have a kid that is, that is uh, uh, so good with the puck, that sees the ice very well, um, has the patience, doesn't panic. And I think, especially as a defenseman, um, you know, when you're new in the league, you've got those big forwards coming at you and they've got the experience. You're, you're more apt to try to get rid of the puck quickly and, and not get in a bad situation and put your team in a bad situation by giving the puck away. And, and Quinn Hughes just has the, uh, the patience to know what to do with it. And, you know, he's, he's good in, in the defensive end, but uh, equally as good as getting that puck out quickly, uh, getting it down ice. And we saw in the third goal tonight that uh, put it away to pass across to uh, Petey. Um, but then he just so sh- showed so much patience and, and control of the puck. So he's going to be fun to watch. I mean, they've got a lot of good players on this team. I mean, they're growing. They're still young. Uh, you know, Horvat's the captain. He's not an old player and, and you know, has, doesn't have a ton of years experience either. But, but they show it right now. And, um, you know, Pedersen's going to get better. Besser's going to get better. Hughes is going to get better. Um, and that's not to talk about some of the – the veterans like Toffoli and, and Miller and Sutter and some of those guys, Beagle, that they've got up front as well. So um, it's a good mix, a good lineup. I like it. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, Jim Benning has been able to really assemble a, a great a great group. We've got some veterans, got some really good young blood coming. And, you know, it's just a, a lot of fun to watch. These these kids are talented. They're confident. They, they have a lot of ability. Uh, you know, there, there was some worry that, um, you know, guys like Pedersen and, Hughes were a little slight for the NHL and uh, you know there's always been a premium on big tough guys um, but uh, you know this NHL has you know put a premium on speed in the last few years and uh, these guys are you know coming in and just showing their worth. Uh, Pedersen was you know so highly touted uh, being able to win MVP of the league in Sweden and MVP of the playoffs when they won their um, title uh, over there. Uh, He comes here 
got his first playoff game, uh, first playoff goal today uh, in this game. He, um, he's been uh, facing a lot of abuse from the, the wild players. Uh, they've been trying to, you know, be very physical with him, but he's been standing up to it. And uh, anytime the people take a little extra liberties with him, his teammates have been jumping in and helping out. So it's really great to see. Uh, you, you have to worry a little bit uh, with this slight frame, but um, he's, you know, he's showing a lot of toughness. Well, and especially in game one, I mean, he got bodied a lot, but they were on top of him, holding him, pulling him back a lot. Um, and to me, a sign of a good player is to, is to, you know, fight that off and just keep playing your game, not, not uh, let it get out of hand where you lose control of yourself. And, and uh, Pedersen certainly has shown that. I mean, he, he was tied up a lot. He didn't have a lot of free space, a lot of free ice, open ice in game one. Uh, but he battled through that. He did, I'm not going to let it affect me. I know things will change a little bit. And they have as as the series has gone on now. The, the ice has opened up a little bit more. And Vancouver's used its speed, especially as forwards up front, to, uh, to create that open ice. Um, but yeah, the, the sign of a good player and a player that's growing well um, is, is to fight those things off when, you, when you're tied up a lot. You don't have uh, the movement, uh, but you know it'll come and he's worked hard to, to gain that and, and it showed today. Yeah, yeah, it sure yeah. did, yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Vancouver takes a, a big 2-1 lead in the series. Uh, game two goes tomorrow night. They have, have a back-to-back, -back, uh, 745 puck drop. So um you know, definitely make sure you don't miss it. A lot of people, when they're watching the playoffs, think it's uh, every second day. But uh, with this condensed schedule and the way they've they've done it, uh, they've got a back-to-backer. Um, yeah, it'd be really nice if they can, um, you know, take care of business and and uh, beat Minnesota. You know, move on to the next round. Uh, a lot of uh, you know pieces have to move to figure out who they're going to play. But um, yeah, they've they've, been, they've looked really good after that first game. I think they finally got their legs under them these last two games, and and um, yeah, I think um, you know they, they have a really good chance to uh, taking this series now. Yeah, I th I think they do. I mean, they've got the upper hand with a two one lead. They only need one more victory in the best of five to wrap it up. But um, you know, if if they get through this this series and and move on from there, I just think they can gain so much more confidence with with each series that they play. And, and I also think, you know, uh, you look at this lineup that the Canucks have and, um, and it could be together for a number of years. I mean, it's always tough when you, you start getting that core group and players start making more money. It's, it's tough to fit them all into the budget. But what it does, I think, is that it shows other players in the league and some of those free agents that are going to come up that, hey, if I'm going to look around and I've somewhat got a choice, they all make decent money so they can choose a little bit where they want to play. Um, why would you not want to play in Vancouver over the next few years? Obviously, a beautiful city and, and, a, and a great place geographically and everything with, with solid fan support, but a solid team on the ice. And that's the main thing. You want to go somewhere where you can win hockey games and win a Stanley Cup. And you have to think that, that Vancouver is now, it hasn't been that way for a few years, but Vancouver is now a destination for free agents that that will look at moving because they can see the lineup, they can see the progress and the talent there and, uh, and see that it's a team that could win for a few years. And, and I would expect that no matter how far they go in the playoffs, but winning a series or two will help cause, um, I suspect that uh, they'll get some free agent series that are looking at the Canucks stuff uh, in that strange kind of off season uh, as we move forward to a December 1st start next year. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's crucial uh, in this day and age with the salary cap, uh, being able to attract good free agents. And you're right, uh, you know, the Oilers had that uh, over the last few years with uh, Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl and guys like that. And a lot of guys wanted to go to Edmonton. And now you're seeing that in Vancouver, the uh, evolution of this uh, roster. And the, these guys are really coming into their own. And uh, yeah, I could see Jim Benning having an easier time being able to sign some high profile free agents and bring them in to complement the core and the roster. And yeah, it's uh, the future's bright. Uh, I, I think so. It's yeah. great. Um, yeah. So Besser had a great goal today. Um, Antoine Roussel, uh, a phenomenal, phenomenal breakaway goal. And uh, as we said, Pedersen, uh, so three, nothing win uh, Markstrom. I think he had about 28 saves today and a huge shout out for them. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, I'm really, really excited about, tomorrow and uh let's hope um you know we can move onwards and upwards for the canucks uh what about some of the other series um the uh the calgary um 
Flames Winnipeg Jets uh, series has been uh, really fun to watch. Obviously, with the two Canadian teams, uh, it's got a lot of eyeballs on it. Um, yeah, have you had a chance to watch a lot of that series yet? Yeah, checked out you know parts of some games there. Um, watched a good chunk of the opening game, and and obviously it was tough for for Winnipeg to lose uh, Shifley and Line in on in that very first game, and and uh, for them to come back in game two and get a victory. Uh, uh, was very special for them, I think, because it showed that, uh, uh, you know, you can lose some key guys, but everybody steps up. It's the, that old cliche in sports or hockey, especially that everybody steps up uh, in adversity like that. And, and the Winnipeg players certainly did in game three, but they're undermanned. I mean, they, they maybe uh, were on a bit of a high to get that victory in game two, but it showed the other night in game three as well that Calgary's got a lot of talent there. And, uh, um, boy, it, you know, and you look at it, you know, we talk about what Vancouver is doing these days and how they're growing. And of course, the Oilers with, with Dreisaitl and, and uh, McDavid and some of the talent they've got and, and Calgary with some of the young talent as well. There's some, and, and uh, Winnipeg, you know, has the talent as well. I mean, you look at those four Western teams and what kind of powerhouse teams right now. It's going to be fun to watch them. They should all be good for, for many years to come. And that just builds a rivalry between all four teams. But, um, I mean, I think Calgary's got the best shot of winning that series. I think Winnipeg's just in a little bit too tough right now, losing uh, losing Shifley and, and losing Line A. And um, uh, so I see Calgary kind of coming through the series win there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, that was a, a big blow for them and their hopes. Uh, you know, everybody mm -hmm. seemed to pick Winnipeg. Uh, you know, a lot of people were – uh, knowing that Calgary got uh, knocked out early last year by Colorado and uh, really embarrassed, uh, they really wanted to, you know, um, prove prove the world that uh, you know they are a good, solid team. Um, but uh, yeah, Winnipeg just, just seemed to have a little too many horses for Calgary. But two of your top, you know, top three guys in the, you know, on your team and losing that, it's just too much of a blow. And uh, yeah, I expect Calgary to be able to close that out soon. Uh, there have been two series that are really um, big upsets right now. A lot of people said, oh, the two teams that will really go through quite easily should be Pittsburgh and, and Edmonton. And uh, Chicago's given Edmonton all they can handle. And Montreal is really shocking the world with yeah. their victories over Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah, pretty amazing uh, upsets in, in both those series. Yeah, when, uh, Montreal, I mean, taking that first game in overtime the way they did, and, and um, they're playing pretty good hockey these days. They just seem to... You know, and and I mean the teams are all in the same boat. They they uh, the season was stopped in in early to mid March, um, and for the most part, they all went home. And unlike a lot of sports, you know, if if you're a baseball player, a basketball player, a lot of the skills you can you can keep going. I think on your own. I mean, your your baseball pitcher or player, you can you can check lives. You can be throwing uh, and and playing and keeping the arm going. It's basketball. You can be shooting hoops in your backyard if you really need to, or, and I'm sure they all did, just to keep in shape. But from a hockey standpoint, you needed ice. You couldn't get ice because all of the arenas were shut down. So it's, it's I think, been a lot tougher uh, on the hockey players than all the other sports. Golfers with PGAs on this weekend. I mean, they could go, in a lot of cases, go play golf on their own and, and continue to work at it. But, yeah. but hockey is different. So I think we're going we're gonna to see some of those surprises in that, you know, the players that adapt a little bit more, um, adapt to an arena without fans, adapt to playing on the road all the time, except for the, for the Maple Leafs and the Oilers. So, um, so there's going to be some surprises and, and yeah, Montreal, Montreal has looked good so far in Chicago. I mean, uh, Kane and, and Taves just, uh, they, they look as, as good now as they did a few years ago when they beat the Canucks a few times in, in the Stanley cup playoffs. They just, uh, they're just amazing talents, and they just keep doing it for Chicago year after year. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we feel them. Uh, we felt the, their wrath here in Vancouver on a few occasions, and uh, until the Vancouver could finally slay the dragon, uh, <laughs> yeah. they they you know just kept getting beat by those two guys in that core of that team. And and uh, yeah, they, they you know they're they still got it. Uh, you know, you, you think that they're gonna it finally pass the torch on and be a little too old but uh yeah so far both those guys have been super dominant in that series and it'll yeah. be interesting to see if the Oilers can can bounce back and uh, you know uh be able to pull it off uh Chicago has looked um really amazing in my opinion mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah um what about these uh round robin games I've had a hard time 
watching some of the round robin games, they just don't mean a lot. Uh, you know, there's a, there's just a sort of a seeding about them. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem to have the same intensity, not as many block shots, not as much, um, you know, ferocity from the guys. Um, you know, have you noticed that yourself? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I've watched a few of the other games, but yes, I mean, the qualifiers obviously are the important ones. The winner moves on, the loser is finished and has gone through a lot of work to possibly lose a series in, in three straight or four games and, and be done right away. Um, the other games, I mean, it, it is a strange format. Um, I could understand the league wanting to get 24 teams in the playoffs and try to include a few more teams that way, but um, I would have maybe sooner seen everybody sit back and let these qualifier games take place for that opening week. And then, you know, if you're getting down to 16, bring everybody in then, and, and then you've got your 16s, 8s, 4s, and 2s that get to a Stanley Cup final. But, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's just a strange thing. You've got playoff games, but playoff games that are only good for seeding and don't mean anything else. So uh, you can't expect teams to go all, all out. You don't want to get players injured. Um, you know, can you imagine if Winnipeg was playing, uh, wasn't playing a qualifying series and, and two main guys go down in it when you know you're going past that? It just wouldn't be a good situation. So it's, it's not the same intensity. It's not playoff hockey intensity. Um, get through this first round and everybody is in it for good then. And, and I'm sure the hockey steps up a little bit after that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess the only real surprise for me in this qualifying has been um, – I mean, sorry, in the seeding rounds has been Boston's 0-2. They were the top team in the regular season, 100 points uh, accumulated until the, the pandemic stoppage. Uh, 0-2 and uh, and Tampa's uh, 2-0. and uh, Looks like Tampa's got a really good chance to finish top of the group and, and Boston can't finish any higher than third. So, um, yeah, the, you know, they're going to face uh, a lot tougher competition than they would have done if they, you know, had the old format. Yeah. Uh, and then on the other side, uh, Colorado's, uh, you know, looking strong. Colorado was really strong. Uh, St. Louis is 0-1, uh, defending cup champions. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a topsy-turvy right there in, in, yeah. in between those four teams on both sides. But, uh, um, yeah, we'll see how it shakes out. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely watching so much more of these qualifying series. And, and they're, you know, they're, they're getting intense, uh, you know, a lot of, toughness and a lot of skill it's been it's been really great um carolina is the only team that's uh, made it through so far all the other series are either 1-1 or 2-1 um yeah toronto uh toronto columbus um you know do you be able, do you see that uh tortorella might be able to will his team to to beat the leafs well you know they had uh, such a good run last year and and um uh obviously it's it's a different kind of season that way um, and, and it's just so strange as well. You've got Toronto obviously hosting the games, but um, no real, no fans in the stands to kind of cheer them on. So home ice doesn't really mean that much more. It's, it's kind of a weird thing for us watching. And obviously everybody's just watching on their TVs or their computers. Um, if, if you get the close-ups of the players, they score a goal, they're all coming together. Um, you don't really realize that there's no fans in the stands because they're piping in the, uh, the audio and, and uh, trying to get the teams going as much as possible. There's just no fans to cheer for them. But so it's a, a strange feeling, uh, strange feeling that way. But uh, Toronto and Columbus uh, hasn't been a bad series. I mean, there's there's been some good games there. They've uh, uh, they've gone back and forth, and uh, you know, in that case, a lot of block shots and injuries along the way. Um, so they're battling hard, and and um, we'll see what comes out of it. Uh, It'd be nice to see Toronto kind of get a series win here and, and still be in the running. Uh, uh, but yeah, it remains to be seen if, if they can kind of pull it out from here. Yeah. yeah. I guess the one beauty is that uh, six Canadian teams are in it. Uh, yeah. The only tough thing was Winnipeg and Calgary got matched against each other. So it's going to be definitely down to five and, and possibly four if, uh, you know, another one gets knocked out here. Um, there's uh, five games on the schedule today that we talked about the Canucks game. Uh, Flyers are beating the Capitals 2-0 uh, near the end of the second period right now. Uh, Vegas and St. Louis starts around 3.30. Uh, Toronto and Columbus has that third game at 5. And then Flames and Jets, a uh, huge game tonight at 7.30. So, yeah, lots of, lots of fun hockey. It's been uh, just yep. really uh, enjoyable for me. I've got four TVs going here. I got my <laughs> couple laptops uh, trying to keep on top of everything. And uh, 
Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, it, it is too bad it's in the summer, but we've got rain here today as well. So yeah. don't, don't feel as bad being at home watching game after game after game. So. Well, well and, and given that uh, when we spoke two weeks ago uh, or three weeks ago it was the start of the baseball season, I was pretty pumped. That was the day the Mets won their, uh, their season opener uh, over Atlanta. And, of course, I've struggled to, I think, a 5-8 and eight record at this point. So, so my my uh, my interest in baseball has waned a little bit because of that. So I'm I'm good with the hockey for now. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. The baseball just hasn't had the same uh, ability to capture my attention right now with uh, basketball coming back and hockey here and and as you mentioned golf and uh, things like that. Uh, uh, but we will touch baseball in a couple minutes. I just want to go over a couple subjects with you. But um, so they're going to have the. Um, Phase two of the draft lottery on Monday, the Alexi uh, Lafreniere w uh, sweepstakes. And uh, mm -hmm. that'll be interesting. Um, the, all the teams that do get eliminated in this qualifying round uh, have a 12.5% chance, which doesn't sound like a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks like, um, yeah, that'll go on Monday. Uh, I, I didn't like the format, the way they had it uh, uh, done a month and a half ago, but um, yeah, it'll be interesting to watch and see who who does uh, you know get that number one overall pick. Yeah, and, and Lafreniere is just such a great talent. Uh, I played so well with uh, uh, with Canada in the World Juniors and showed so much and came back from that injury and, and just played so well for for Team Canada. So um, you know he's it doesn't happen every year, although it seems to be more and more that there is a superstar every year up for grabs in the NHL draft. Um, you know, you go back over the last number of years and there's been somebody big there and, and we're at that situation again. It's, it's that franchise player, I guess, that the teams talk about and look for. And, and yeah, it's, it's just an, it's just an oddball situation right now with the playoffs that we're in into August. Um, a Stanley Cup winner uh, in September, October, and then uh, get the draft going and, and start a new season December 1st. So it's, it's, uh, it's one of those weird kind of years. But um, yeah, all eyes will be on that, uh, on that uh, draft situation right now because uh, Lafreniere is, is uh, a good one and, uh, and can be one of those players that, that can obviously have a, a serious impact right away for a lot of teams. So yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed, of course, that the Canucks are, are not part of that mix, that they win this series and move on. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's more the important thing right now. Is they, they want to get a series win and try to win a Stanley Cup and, and show the league that they're a force to be reckoned with for a few years. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, some of those free agents will look at them a lot more seriously as well. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, no, I I definitely prefer uh, yeah playoff series win and make yeah. it round of 16 and on and on and on uh you know that's that's when uh you know the city gets swept up in it that's when yeah. the you know the fans that are sort of half in half out uh jump all the way in and you know we start seeing flags on the cars and we start you know definitely uh getting that canucks fever all over the city all over this province and you know it's really uh you know it's exciting uh it, we we see it in many canadian cities when their team goes on a big run uh you know we see big parties in the streets and uh, tons of fun. Everybody's wearing their jerseys to work and all over. And yeah, it'd be nice to finally have that after five years of no playoffs here. We were yeah. kind of starved for that here. Well, and, and I mean, I was having a good conversation with my son York watching the game the other night and, and just talking about, you know, the lack of revenue that's there for every team right now, because when you get into the playoffs, um, you fill the arena, everybody makes sure they have a Jersey for their, for their home team when they go to the game. So uh, so you're you're buying a lot of merch and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's all changed right now. I mean, teams probably aren't selling a heck of a lot of it because everybody is sitting at home watching the games. You don't you don't create that interest. But you know what? As time moves on, if uh, if the Canucks win a series or two and go deep into the playoffs, um, Dr. Bonnie Henry will probably have another problem in her hand because uh, people are going to want to get together, either go to the bars and watch some games there on a big screen, or have some some parties at homes where people get together and watch the game. So it's going to change things a little bit, but there's still going to be the interest there. And, and yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter if it's this situation or not. A city gets excited when a scheme starts winning in the playoffs and advances uh, deep into the playoffs. And uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed. This could be one of those years for the Canucks to, uh, you know, and, and Hey, I, even though they're a young team, I just think they've, 
they've got as good a shot as anybody because what happened the other part of the season up till March really doesn't matter anymore. Um, it's, it's out the window. Uh, everything is, is starting fresh with 24 teams here and, and some playing qualifying, qualifying series they have to win. But, um, but everybody is pretty much in the same boat and, and uh, you get some breaks every now and then. We, we watched Carolina as an eight seed uh, advance deep into the playoffs and win a few years ago. We saw Edmonton as an eight seed upset some teams a few years ago and, and get to the Stanley Cup final. So, um, so that can happen. And this year it's not even as, as profound as it has been in the past because everybody was off for so many months, had that quick one, uh, one month training camp and is in the playoffs right away. So uh, it creates excitement in the cities that are still in it. And uh, yeah, the deeper you go, uh, the more interest there's going to be. I, I see some cars driving around Penticton with uh, with Connect flags hanging out the window, and 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 saw saw a, a gentleman. I had to go over to the library before we did the podcast today, and had his Canucks jersey on, had the big black uh, puck on his head, <laughs> and ended up seeing him walking on the street and then going into the library. So, um, which I was surprised at because the game was on at that point, but. Um, uh, we're seeing a lot of that and, and uh, hopefully more because uh, we can see the Canucks keep going for a while. Yeah, yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, definitely add so much excitement. And yeah, it brings out the rabid fans <laughs> that are uh, uh, you know, stuck at home right now. Uh, one thing I did notice that I wanted to mention, and uh, you reminded me when you were talking, uh, is uh, keep your eye out. Everybody go online. Uh, there is a um, drive-in party in Toronto. They are allowing fans to get together by the lakeshore. They've got a big facility there where they're going to have a big screen and they're allowing people to come for both the Leafs and the Raptors. You can yeah. drive in your car. You can come and sit and watch the game. You can honk your horn and, and cheer when, uh, you know, the team does well. And, uh, yeah, that might be, uh, you know, something that we see in a lot of cases. Yeah. Uh, the New England was, I think, the first uh, organization. New England and MLS was the first organization to do that. They allowed people to go into Gillette Stadium and sit in their vehicles and, uh, you know, cheer while the game was on on the big screen. Uh, but, yeah, it's pretty pretty smart of them because they're missing out on Maple Leaf Square and Jurassic Park quite a bit in Toronto. Well, it's all about marketing in a lot of ways. We, we, uh, we both know that. We deal with it a lot, and, and it's, it's vitally important. So, um, so the teams that are smarter and, and come up with unique ways of, of either selling the game to their fans, selling more merchandise to them, uh, or just getting them involved in, in the hockey experience in this case, um, you benefit from it. You, you need to grow your base with younger fans all the time. And, and the more that you, um, you keep open to them through the ways of social media and everything else and pod, podcasts such as the one that you've got going, Darren, um, it just builds up more interest in, in the league and in the teams and, uh, and gets young player or young fans involved that much more. So you got to be, you got to be unique with it. You got to be uh, open-minded and uh, it's good to see that some teams are doing that right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I, I, uh, I hope we can see that around here. I hope there are some you know, celebrations yeah. and some ways of gathering crowds. Cause it's always a lot of fun when you're, you know, in amongst a big crowd and you get to cheer on your favorite team.